Okay, so this has been a big year for you, a different year for you, for a million reasons, going from Florida to PA, I just wanted them. Uh, but from a responsibility standpoint, how has this been different from the past few years, being that you're back in a coordinator role and not dealing with, I guess, it's still a high intensity job, but you don't have to deal with, I guess, some of the headaches that come with being yeah. a power five head coach. So. It's, it's very different. And, and unless you've been a head coach, you don't really understand how different it is. Um, but you know, I, the one thing I've noticed, it's not just about being a coordinator as opposed to head coach, it's, it's about having a position room again. Um, you know, head coach has a connection with everybody on the team. That's, that's one of the differences, but you don't really have that depth and that, that really, you know, everyday bond like you do when you're in a room and you're really the directly responsible for a position group. So, uh, and I bet if you ask Coach Franklin, I bet if you ask any head coach around the country, that's probably the thing you miss the most is, is having your guys. They're all your guys. But let's be honest, it's hard to really get that, that deep and that intense with 110 kids. So to have a room again, to really be a teacher, that's what we all are. Our, our name says coach, but we really are teachers. Uh, so, so to get back into that teaching type environment, that's been really rewarding. Uh, what are your, some of your uh, thoughts uh, just on State College in general now that you've been here for, I guess, more than half a year? Yeah, made it through my first winter. So I've got, I've, got that, uh, I've got that badge on my. Uh, um, I've, I've 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 been really uh, excited. It, it's amazing, and to show you the, the the best compliment I can give the town is what happens when recruits come here. Right. Uh, they're they're just they're just blown away. This place just sparkles, obviously, in, in uh, official visit season. Um, and then the people, you know, our community is made up of, of people, not not things. Um, and so it's been it's it's been a really good transition. It's made it very easy for for myself to. Uh, to feel it all there. So going back to early signing day, uh, you were very complimentary of Abdul Carter, who's a freshman right. linebacker. Now that he didn't come until the summer, so you've only seen a few days of practices, but now that you've seen him up close a little bit, what are some observations you have um, yeah. of him uh, thus far? We're still very highly complimentary <laughs> of Abdul Carter. Uh, and, and even Keon Riley is doing a nice job of, of uh, you know, for me, a, a guy with his hand in the dirt, you know, playing defensive end to stand up and play Mike linebacker. Um, now, look, it's early. There are only two padded practice, two shoulder padded practices into it, and and they're swimming a little bit as the install goes. But uh, what you always want your young guys to do is, at some point during the practice, to make some sort of flash play to let you know, okay, yeah, I see it. And um, they've done it. Abdul, he's, he's had he's had some back to back days. Uh, now it's just you know, like I said, those guys, the learning part of it is where they got to play catch up. And here comes, you know, what always happens over training camp is sort of the, the enormity of. The pace, it, it, it'll catch up to them, and the, and the ones that can fight through that, that's the part you don't ever know in recruiting. Do they have the maturity that first August, September to fight through it? And, and, and then you got to look at the season in a couple different ways, you know? I mean, you know, the guys that are ready August 1st may not be the guys that are ready September 1st, may not be the ones ready October 1st, and for sure may not be the ones ready November 1st, you know? I mean, at Miami, my first year as D.C., we started three true freshmen at linebacker. Mm -hmm. um, we started a freshman at corner. We started a freshman at the end, but not always – the freshman we started the first game, the corner, the DN, those guys sometimes don't start till November. Those guys may not have played it in a snap in the first game in September. So um, the depth chart is ever evolving. The development never ends. Um, and it's always about when, you know, I would say, when do they have that matrix moment? You know, like when Neo starts to stop seeing the bullets and starts seeing the ones mm -hmm. and zeros. And, and when that game starts to slow down, usually first, and here, you know, it works. Normally it's finally, it slows down the practice field. Then it slows down in the scrimmage setting, and then finally it slows down on game day. Um, and that's what's fun as a, as a teacher uh, to help them along in that in that uh, progression. A, a guy that has seen a lot of matrix moments is, is Dan Carr. Uh, his experience is in the linebacker room, especially yeah. you know when, when the linebackers are a question mark, and then you have that competition with the linebacker. What kind of wisdom has he been able to impart on the guys along with you? To, you know, maybe get them ready. Right, playing linebacker at Penn State is a unique thing, right? I mean, that's you know, that's just not an experience that most people have. Dan Connor has. So for these guys, for Dan to be able to say, I've literally been in your shoes, uh, how, how could they not respect him? Um, Dan's a great coach. He's also a great teacher. Um, so whether it's how to prepare, um, you know, how I did things, how to see things, how to just deal with the demands of, of what it means to be a football player on this campus, all those things, I mean, that, that's a... That's a legend you're talking to right there. So I, th I think it's been, you know, so beneficial for our guys and, uh, and their development.
Manny, what is Curtis Jacobs' speed as a linebacker? Yeah, can he play wide out in high school? And he's been just a really fast player. What does he? What, what is that? Uh, asset enable maybe you to do as far as, as far as maybe deploying linebackers and using him differently. I know you've had some speedy linebackers at Miami, but yeah. he's a pretty fast guy. Well, there's two ways to look at it. Yeah. I mean, you can look at it schematically, where you know obviously with speed, you know covers matchups. You know yeah. guys you can cover. Uh, certainly his ability as a blitzer, he's got some good blitzing instincts. But let's make it even more simple than that. Look, you want to be a fast defense. I mean, obviously, look, the field's going to be 53 yards wide no matter where you play. Speed covers up holes. So when things happen, the faster you are on defense, the smaller the field becomes for an offense. Um, everyone wants our defensive backs to run fast or whatever. When your front seven can roll, then you really, really shrink that grasp of that offense because you can just – it may be open, but it doesn't stay open for very long. So, uh, so we want all of our guys to be able to run. And Kurt, you know, to me, is what you would want a wheel linebacker to be. I know one of the compelling things you talked about how maybe underappreciated the linebacker room is and how they're using that as a motivational tool. We all know Jacobs is terrific. What about that overall unit? Maybe taking on that attitude, as you said, LBU and things like that. Well, we have two choices. We can say, hey, we lost all these guys from last year. It's okay. Why don't you guys just play, you know, C plus B minus ball this year, and we'll just, you know, we'll try to make up for some runs. So we can say no. And and, and what are they going to do? They're going to lower their, their standard for that expectation. Or we can say no. This is Penn State. There's no drop off. You guys signed with Penn State. This didn't become LBU yesterday. Like, you knew the tradition and the expectation here. So why don't we just keep our standards, extra, you know, as high as we possibly can and say we have to play at an A plus level because we're Penn State. And. If they play like an A plus, we got a great thing. If they were an A or an A minus, we're still better off than what we thought we were. So to me, I'm not, you know, my instinct is always to keep expectations extraordinarily high. Um, so they've got the ability to understand. Listen, we're not going to bring our expectations down for you because of your lack of experience. And also, what's this four two five? Uh, everybody's playing it. You know, it's so many high speed offenses, things like that. Can you talk to us about the intricacies of not only teaching it but playing it? It's interesting, you know. It's probably not as big tactically as it sounds. Um, look, everyone played a 4-3 because there were two wideouts on the field. So you wanted four defensive backs, you know, around the two wideouts. Um, most people in college football now play with three wideouts on the field. So uh, whether you put a fifth defensive back so that that guy can be around that slot so you have a better matchup out there. So the guys, you know, an old school traditional Sam linebacker, you know, that guy was there taking on fullbacks and beating up tight ends all day. Well, now you got a slot receiver out there. So you can either do two things. You can either sub and put a nickel back in the game and be in a true 4 2 5, or, you know, like we're blessed with a guy like Jonathan Sutherland who has safety skills, but he's tough to play inside a linebacker. And so you're seeing more of these hybrid type guys. You can call them whatever you want to call them, but they can, they're, they're athletic enough to play in space, but they're physical enough to come back in the box and, and stop runs in the box. So 4 2 5, 4 3, those are just ways you get aligned. I don't think there's a tremendous difference between the two. Um, other than how you deploy your coverage. So that might be an obvious answer, but you've got true freshmen coming in that are looking to get to the 2D. What are the biggest adjustments that they've got to make to get in your plan, be on your radar, make a contribution? It's the speed of the game. You know, I mean, often, college offenses go so fast. You know, just the way college practices, the way that we practice, the plays just come so hot and heavy. Um, and then what happens is they're learning all this. It's like learning a foreign language. And the difference between thinking and knowing you know, you, so the guy's out there thinking as opposed to when the call comes in, you just knows where to go and what to do. And then you just got to push through. You know, look, the reality is these guys, if, if you get recruited to Penn State, you're probably the best player on your team in high school, if not up there. Um, truth be told, when you're the best player, you probably don't have to bring it every day because you're the best player you're going to play no matter what. So it's very hard usually for young freshmen to have the maturity to understand, I've got to bring my best every day during training camp. Um, because they're not used to that. And then, and that's why it's great to have guys like Jair Brown, Jonathan Sutherland, people like that, who can set the tone. Like, wow, look how hard this guy works every single day. Man, I never had to work that hard. Um, and that's why it's great when you have older guys who can teach younger guys, hey, talent notwithstanding, you earn the respect of the locker room through your work ethic and your toughness. So that's what's assumed, yes. The first image I think people had of you as a Penn State coach was walking out of that South Tunnel um, right. under the one and O sign. What were you thinking about when you went on to the Baver Stadium uh, surface uh, for the first time, I guess, as Penn State's defensive coordinator? Yeah, like this is like one of the great cathedrals in college football, you know, and it, it's no different than like you go to Europe and, you know, and, and see, you know, some, uh, you know, 
great castle or great cathedral over there. I mean, you walk in, you got to take in the place. You know, it's, these are places you've only seen on TV. It's like, you know, it's like a Hollywood movie set. So, uh, um, you know, if you love sports and if this place doesn't get your kind of heartbeat going a little bit, you know, then I don't know, something's wrong with you. So, uh, and the problem is, is that whenever date that was back in December, it's been a whole bunch of months and I've still not been in here uh, with 107,000 people uh, joining me. So I'm really looking forward to that. You really know good secondary play. You know, Miami, he's got one of the best in the country. And it's right there for him in Porter. Um, what does he have to do to take the next level? Because he's already on NFL radar and everything like that. What does he need to do to make the next step consistently, maturity, and everything else? Because everything else is there. I think it's about being that guy every week. If, if you're going to be the, you know, if you're, if you're me, your best players have to be your best players. And they have to be your best players every week. Um, I don't know a lot about, you know, I, I didn't watch a lot of film from last year, but I just know what I saw from spring practice. Yeah, Joey's very talented. Um, so, you know what? We want to put him in positions. It's like I always say, we're going to put this guy batting fourth in the lineup. Well, there's a certain level of production that you should expect. Um, or in bat, use a basketball reference, you know? If, if you're that guy, then, you know, you got to average 25 points a game. You know, if you score six, we're probably going to get beat. So, uh, you know, that's the fun thing about college football. When a guy comes as a freshman, and then as their role increases, increases, a guy will have a, a, a good year, a big year like that, that, kind of that coming out year, that following year, you got to be the man because graduation took a lot of really good players off this defense. So it's now it's your turn to step up. You got a lot of youth. I mean, how ferocious is this offense versus defense? I mean, iron sharpens iron. But it sounds to me like you guys are really getting after each other to kind of get this ready. Simply, you got a hell of an opponent week one. You got to be ready to rock and roll right away. Yeah, going on the road in, in the league in a night game. Uh, it's quite a challenge. So I'll tell you, we've, we've only had two practices with shoulder pads on. Everything starts up front, and I think our offense line is trying to get after our defense line and vice versa. Uh, there's been some, some, a lot of physicality, I and mean, I think both sides are trying to pride themselves on their toughness. Um, and it's a battle of will. I think we have really talented running backs, so it's a great challenge every day for our linebackers and our front seven uh, to stand up every time our offense wants to run the football. So what's the experience of preparing for a week one game? Because, Grand, you have more time, but also the film you're watching is from – eight however many months ago and so much could change so is this what do you say more challenging or easier than only having a week or so to prepare well it depends a little bit it depends on on how much stability the team that you're playing has i mean um you know obviously when you're talking about you know our opener you know uh you're talking about one of the, the top offensive head coaches in the game uh so you, you, you he's got a resume in terms of what he did expect um do they know what to expect from us? You know, I mean, the, the you know what we've done in Miami, what, what's been done here in the past, Penn State. You know, that's that's probably something that they've got to figure out. But um, look, usually openers are about yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, it's about your conditioning level. Uh, it's about your ability to do the things where you're not just always challenged in training camp, which is special teams. Special teams are the side openers. Uh, the best tackling team normally decides openers. The team that protects the football the most and protects uh, decides openers. Those are true most games, but I think they're really heightened in week one because until you get in that flow of playing every Saturday and guys getting hit, protecting the ball, not protecting the ball, protecting on a field goal protection, protecting on a punt protection, um, you know, we're the only sport, pro, college, scholastic, that doesn't have an exhibition game before we start playing. We're the only sport that just, hey, let's just kick it off and have it be for all the marbles. So, uh, so you got to be, your team's got to be ready. And I think our guys understand how important that opener is. You referenced Coach Brom earlier. Um, what are some other additional thoughts you have uh, on Purdue, uh, if any? So. Well, look, the game's not complicated. Who touches the ball on every play? The quarterback, right? And, and again, you've got two quarterbacks, you know, uh, counting Sean as well, that are as experienced as anybody in the country in terms of how long they've been um, in their program. So you have two guys that have seen it all, uh, that know their playbook inside and out. Um, you're not going to fool them. Uh, and, and, you know, their guy might have been playing as well as anybody in the, in the in shooting the conference. And if you're playing as well as anybody in this conference, a quarterback, then you're playing about as anybody as anybody in the, in the country. So um, that's always a great challenge for, for, uh, for a defense, you know, because we're not going to have a rookie quarterback out there who's unsure of himself. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about Tyler Elson?